and you see how you can build upon it. Some of the stuff obviously is a demo I'm going to show you. Don't get worried about it and think, oh my god. Yeah, and what I want you to do is just think about the way you've been taught here. It will always be progressively taught in all of the classes, so you're not going to be thrown in completely at the deep end. Um, so don't get stressed about it and think I'm not going to be able to do <coughs> these, uh, these techniques. So we're going to start off showing you some of the striking skills from uh, we use full boxing starts to work from. So I'm just going to get Rick to do a few combinations so you can see what they're like to start off with. Okay, so jab, cross. Jab cross. Jab cross loop. Double jab. Jab lead cross. Lead. Sorry. Jab lead hook cross. Good. Cross rear elbow. Good. Jab cross rear elbow. Good. Jab cross up Good. Cross. I'm knocking Cross. Good. Okay. Great. So that's the core handwork that you'll you'll use. I'm going to show you a couple of um, a couple of the kicks that you already know. <coughs> yeah. Um, okay, roundhouse kicks. Okay, so you've done a few of those already. So I'm going to show you some roundhouse kicks from here. Shoot! Yes! Right hand trap! Right hand trap! Right hand trap! From there. So that's to the body and the legs from here. Shoot! Right hand trap! Right hand trap! Knee strikes. Again attached, you've done those already. Into the body and to the head if necessary. Rear leg push kicks, distance techniques. And then So that's some of the kicking. So now we're going to go on to some of the joint locking. Through that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're a few months fast the technique and then just what we So grabbing around the throat, yeah. Oh he was punching me as well, so I'm blocking that with a and then we call it less block. Palm heel to jaw, elbow to jaw, into a wrist lock, him down to the ground, controlling him, telling him where he was gonna go. Yeah, into a powerful joint lock on the ground. Here. And then I brought him into this position and then used another pressure point on the ground. So if he tries to get up from there, he's not going to be able to. With all of his strikes as well that we've learned. <coughs> so work off of a grab from here. Okay, so from here. Push! Dance! Stand in front! Stand in front! So from here, what we're doing on that technique, as you can see, it's an aggressive response. Strike from here. I'm now applying a very powerful gooseneck wrist lock to his wrist. And if he wants to try and get up, okay, so it's very powerful. I'm then loosening him with a strike to ground. And now I'm tying him up from here. What I've got on here is wrist lock, an elbow lock, and a shoulder lock. If he wants to try and get up, if I drop my body weight, if I choose, if I need to, so say he's another attacker and I don't want to be pinning on the floor. If I drop my body weight and break the wrist, elbow and dislocate the shoulder from that position. From there. Again, someone holding hands up. This is a progression that you've already done from here. You've done this, which is the breakaway technique. So this is the reason I'm showing this, and so you can see the progression. <coughs> This breaks away, but if I hold his hand first, he can't break away, and it's an elbow lock. So from here, front, front. Okay, I lost it, but I've controlled it back again. So let's go through talking about that. Same thing you did. This time I hold his hand, so now he can't release. Okay. What I was going to do is an underhook to here and a strike and take him down and now apply the shoulder lock. But in the heat of the moment, things go wrong, so there's no wrong technique. So, what I did from here, and I lost it, 
<coughs> at this point, the hand slips out, and then I use the wrist to sit down. And now we use tricep tendon receptor just behind here to restrain the no. So I'm using very little force and I'm controlling him on the ground from this position. Okay. So all of the night. That was it. Okay. Yep. <coughs> so I'm going to do two knife techniques and Rick's going to do two. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do <coughs> threat defense. You guys have done a little bit of this before, yeah? We're going from here to here to strike to arm break. Okay? So now we're gonna get out of the table. Release the weapon! Release it! Release it! So same thing as you guys did in your class. Create some archery strike, headbutt to straighten the arm, arm break, throw. Was additional from here. I'm now destroying his elbow on the ground and I'm breaking his wrist to retain the knife. Okay, is it your one next? <coughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, number one, please. Okay, so from this was from a slash across the body. So I stop that with my hand, but fingers in the throat, which we've done. Yeah, fingers in the throat. Tip the fingers to the groin. I come up and broke the elbow, pinching in on the elbow. Here yeah, I'm pushing this wrist down. That's locking the elbow. Okay, slipped in. Throw. No. And into this lock here, I can hold this hand here, take the knife, control him on the ground. Okay? okay so we're going to work off of threat from here. So maintaining eye contact from there. Get on your front! Give me the knife! So let's just risk off and throw. Rick's an experienced looking, so if he'd have resisted at any point during that throw, his wrist would have been broken, okay, so he relaxed, which is why he went into that position. If he'd have stiffened up, the wrist would have been broken from here. So what I did is I parried and my arm was locked. This is really important. The arm is bent, you can pump that in, especially if you're stronger than me. If the arm is locked, <coughs> No matter how big or strong he is, as he tries to move it towards me, I've always got that distance, so we're locking the arm. Then at that point, <coughs> I put in a strike to break the floating ribs, okay, and we use a wrist lock to take him over. Loads of finishes you can do on the ground. What I chose to do is use the wrist to bring him in here, spin the shoulder and disarm. And just in case, hold that for real, Rick. Yes, I am. Okay, so you, they work. The joint locks work very powerful. And I'm back in control of the situation. Okay. Oh, yeah. This was a slash coming from this side, okay? So, block and roll into this position, ready for the break on the elbow, against your shin. Okay, he's gonna be letting go of that knife if you're doing that. If not, I came out, thumbs on the back, strip the knife, I can hold him in this position with just that wrist lock on, okay? I can use the knife as well, okay? Okay, a little bit of groundwork. So we've done a little bit of groundwork. So I'm going to show you one of the techniques from Yellow Belt, which is a slightly more advanced technique. But it gives you an idea of where you can go to eventually 
when it, if you're training in the uh, jiu-jitsu class. So he's strengthening me on the ground, so he's taking my air supply and my blood supply. So from this position here, I'm going to hit the hands so he can't pull this away and start hitting me. <coughs> if I start doing things like this, bang, my head's on the ground, I'm going to take a lot of impact on the head. So I'm hitting the hands, thumb in the eye. Strike some correct sinus, I'm now heel kicking him in the kidney cavity, which is horrible. Interlocking my legs. Using two pressure points to break the grip, strangle for it. Okay, bring him forward, and I dislocate his hips. Roll him off. From here, I'm going to break the arm, come underneath, and then we've got a hip lock and a shoulder lock. <coughs> Struggle. Taking floating ribs, mounting, and knocking him out from here. <coughs> Another groundwork technique alongside the body. Teeth, teeth, teeth! Okay, so. Strangling again alongside the body. Yep. Strike into the nose, ears. Kidneys, everything we've done on the self defence. Hand comes up into the throat, hand on the back of the head, get my knee in on the stomach. Shin kick the side of the head, hook it over, and then I pull him forward. And him this way, break this arm, <coughs> and in the sleeper hold here with my foot on his cottage side, just putting him to sleep. Okay? Push him away. Okay. Okay, so uh, just to do some variation, I'm going to show you some of the Filipino martial arts Steve, this stuff. It's vast, but I'm just going to show you one little drill um, from Carly, which is double stick, and it um, teaches you timing, distancing. There's a huge amount of benefits to it, and also single stick. It's just great, great fun as well. So this is just a drill called Heaven Standard and Earth. Okay, so that's a little some of the Filipino martial arts. We also use single stick from here, so as you can get an idea, we're fighting armour as well. So with real sticks, if that's not popular and hungry. Okay, so. Yeah, that From there, so that's some of the single stick stuff <coughs> that would be used in, in combat and also disarms as well, close range. Disarms from here, I'm restricting him from here now. I now have his weapon from there. So the equivalent lock that you saw earlier, where I was doing this, I'm now doing the same thing with the stick and destroying him from here. So, yeah. <coughs> disarm as well from there. Trapping, it's called roof block. Trapping, and now disarming, and that would be hit from there as well. So that's the you know, martial arts side of things. Okay, so we're going to go on to doing some fries. Okay, all right. Uh, two hooks, please. Yes, 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 yes. So that's off second belt, red belt. So we did blocking two solid strikes. Yeah. 
knife hand to groin, we've done. Back fist to face, <coughs> elbow to jaw, elbow to break the collarbone, scratch and wrap. Move in, throw. Yeah, there's lots of different finishes on this. We can hit, yeah, break the arm on this leg, joint lock, or a sleeper hold, which, which I did on the other one. Isolating the head as he comes with a punch and going deep in. Correct time to affect his level of consciousness. I'm now stepping in behind him and taking him over the top. And at this point now I'm using an arm lock and a nerve, put the nerve hold to control him on the ground from here. So you can break that or you can just use this initial control or we'll then come in and strike afterwards. One single hook, please. Dish, 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 dish. So aggression in everything we do, yeah? <coughs> Aggressive response. So, <coughs> blocked a single hook strike, cut the back of the head, uppercuts to the body, place the hand on here, and I just sat down. <coughs> Depending on where you end up, if you can get a mount on him, then you can use all of your strikes. But your matter might actually end up in this position where you can use your heel kicks to the back, or shin kicks to the side of the head. So it just depends where you end up. Everybody's positioning is different. <coughs> so, the next one we're going to use, see lots of throws with multiple strikes. We're going to do a throw now with very few, few strikes initially and he's taking his energy and using it against him so we're gonna the harder he punches the worse it is for him so basically i use the momentum of his punch to continue in and do something called a body drop from here which is a faster throw than a hit throw taking him over from here. Again, you can see we can use striking finishes or more advanced finishes. I'll show you one slightly more advanced finish just for a measure. <laughs> Figure four long. Knees on, sleep holds. We'll learn that one first belt. This is a more advanced one where now I'm actually <coughs> using sleep hold to knock him out from that position as well. So my legs are uh, wrapped around his carotid sinus and basically we'll put it to sleep. Um, <coughs> so we've done this before, yeah? <laughs> Again, we're going to whatever lock we've got available under here. Codded signs, we use that all the time. Yeah, we've used that all the time in the self-defence, Jiu-Jitsu we use all the time. Either to put him to sleep or just control him on the ground. Or I can break that arm from this position, depending on the situation. Yeah? So we did that as, you know, when we did in self-defence, when someone was attacking you around there, so you learned the breakaway technique from that, and we just incorporated a throw into that at a higher level. Single, please. So from here, we blocked. I entered the broken collarbone. From here, elbowed the head. I'm now in a position where I can choke him, kneeing him. I'm now using a sacrificial throw to take him over. You may not realise this. This is an incredibly powerful choke. Let the head drop out, strike, and finish the fight. And fall over. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay, so 
We'll just do one, show you one more technique, which is a control and restraint technique. I won't do it at speed. Just so you can see, some of the guys that train with me are from various professions where they need to control people. So what we're going to do... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to use an arm drag to get him into a reposition. Take him down and control him. Starting to apply the choke, which means his hands would eventually come up to defend it. Okay, they have to, otherwise the choke's on. I'm now going to turn him to the ground. I can restrain him on the ground from here. This is solid trying to get up. He's quite a bit stronger than me. In fact, I think I'm the smallest one in the club. Apart <laughs> <laughs> from marriage, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if it works on people like Big Pat, the name gives it away. <laughs> Big Pat, it's 18 stone dormant. <clears throat> then you can still control him. So from here now, I'm going to go into the reverse shoulder lock. I can relax now, get up. No, 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 no. Okay, if I need to search him. Oh. Take your back shoulder. No, yeah, it is, it's fine. Okay. So I can search him. I can come out. I'll just do this gently. Just yeah, that's fine. 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 Search him on this side. If I need to get him up on his feet, I'm going to use a restraint. Now this, <coughs> deceptively, when I hop out, looks like he could just get up. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Try and get up. No. So from here now, what I'm going to do is roll his elbow up, stick it in my armpit, and I'm going to use a wrist lock to get him up on his feet. <gasps> feet with me, with me. And now we've got a restraint where I can take him and move him if I need to. Okay. Technique of your choice. <sighs> Can you just move the picture? Right. Move it. Press it. Dude, dude. Yeah. Dude, I had to change it, um, so it wasn't really controlled because I was sweaty and slippery. But aggressive response. Yeah, here. Yeah. Hand on the back of the other, take him to the wall. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Underhook, yeah. bringing my knee in, and I can control him from this position. Yeah. Into here, and I can walk him backwards or out. Obviously, I felt him slipping away, I had to change it, and that's what the Jiu Jitsu is all about. You have set techniques you learn, but you never, you know, you may never use the wall from end to end. You know, the, the, the thing about Jiu Jitsu is nothing will ever go to plan, so you have to change it and have to change your game plan along the way. So that's a very quick 20 minute overview of what the Jiu Jitsu and Carl is about, what the club's about, it's about practical techniques rather than aesthetically pleasing techniques. They are, still looks good, but it's all powerful, real stuff. Um, the club that's Riggs running will be fully integrated into into my club and my system and uh, I'll be overseeing the gradings as well so I'll be around if you guys are training as well popping down from time to time Rick will bring the students down to us they're all nice guys and girls and we don't have anyone with any goes on the mat because of the way we train and it's a really nice environment again what you've seen here some of it has been you know quite advanced don't get freaked out about it and think oh, I couldn't do that You've done your self-defense class, which you have done, you can do that, you will be able to do the jiu-jitsu as well. It's taught progressively, you're not expected to come in and do the things that we've just shown you now. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for your time. And if you've got any, sorry. Of course, of course. Just before we finish, guys. Barry, what does jiu-jitsu mean? Sorry? <coughs> jiu-jitsu means compliant art, which is slightly misleading, really. Or soft art. <laughs> so Jew is compliant or soft. Jitsu means battlefield.